Good morning, my friends. Uh, today is Sunday, February 25th. It is the second Sunday of Lent. I uh, just got back from Ohio on Saturday evening. I uh, had a great time in Toledo and Columbus, so thank you to all who uh, for your generosity and, and welcome in the Buckeye State. Glad to be home and ready to uh, get after our school gala Saturday night and then Sunday Mass is here. Wearing my Cubs jacket as spring training, you know, the games have begun now, which is getting exciting. And I want us to think about, in terms of our spiritual spring training, so our day 12 of Lent be formed in spiritual spring training. If you were on a baseball team and you had a glimpse of your team celebrating the World Series at the end of the year, how would that make you feel? And would it make the, the tough times and the work that you had to put in worth it? I say that because as we go into the gospel today, the transfiguration, Jesus is trying to show his key players, if you will, what glory looks like and to give them some hope in the midst of the upcoming trials that they're going to experience. So let's start with the gospel. Mark chapter 9, Jesus took Peter, James, and John. So this is his, you know, probably his three captains of the team, if you will. And where else did he take Peter, James, and John? But into Gethsemane when he was praying before the Passion. Um, and he takes them up the mountain. Whenever you hear mountain, think encounter with God. His clothes become dazzling white. Elijah and Moses, Elijah representing the prophets, Mo Moses representing uh, the law, and uh, Peter and the, and the guys were awestruck. Peter just said probably the first thing that came to mind, Rabbi, it's good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Some say that means, you know, we want to stay on this mountaintop. Let's, let's build three booths and have you stay there. Whatever it is, you know, Imagine what it was like. They, they, were, they were shocked. He said he hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. And then we hear the voice of the Father again, like the baptism. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. What was coming was Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection. And Jesus was trying to prepare his captains to say, this is what glory looks like. Elijah, Moses, Jesus... This is what heaven looks like. And so when I go through my passion and death and resurrection, don't lose hope. When you're persecuted, um, when things look tough, don't lose hope. And I think he wants us to have that message today as well, that no matter how difficult things get, do not lose hope. Glory awaits us. The victory's already been won. That's the difference here. You know, we don't know if the Cubs or you know, the Dodgers, the Rangers, the Diamondbacks. We don't know who's going to win the World Series this year. But we do know who's won the ultimate victory. That Jesus has won the victory. And he's trying to show them this is what it looks like. So the, the effort that we put into our spiritual lives, the prayer, the, the fasting, the almsgiving, it's all worth it in the end. And, and the suffering as well. If we go to the first reading, now remember during Lent, there's not a thematic connection between the first reading, Old Testament, and the Gospel. We're, in the first reading, we're going through different parts of salvation history in the Old Testament. Uh, so last week we had the, Noah's Ark and the covenant with Noah. This week we have Abraham going up the mountain, another mountain. And this mountain, uh, Moriah, happens to be in Jerusalem. And, uh, and so you see the connections here between... Isaac and Jesus. So Abraham has been waiting for this child. Now God asks him to sacrifice the child. Isaac carries the wood to his sacrifice, just like Jesus carrying the cross. Um, the father is asked to sacrifice his son. It says God, the father, asked Jesus to, uh, to sacrifice himself, offer himself, himself as... Um, you know, a payment for our sins. They see a ram in thorns. This is interesting. 
they see a ram and thorns. Ram, rams were representative of kings. And of course, the, the thorns, you know, the crown of thorns. So Jesus, the king of kings uh, and thorns. So there's so many connections between Isaac and Jesus. And so looking back now in this story in light of what happened to Jesus, why would, why would Abraham be asked to sacrifice his son? It's this foreshadowing of put yourself in the picture of Abraham the father. The agony of being asked to sacrifice his son. Now we think about that in the, from the sense of God the Father, what he, the love that he's showing us by offering us his son in payment for our sins, it should blow us away at how far God's willing to go to save us, to love us. And then quickly, St. Paul's letter to the Romans, he says this, if God is for us, and he is, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, we've been talking about that, uh, but handed him over for us all. How will he not also give us everything else along with him? So we can trust God that even in certain times in life, things don't make sense. Maybe in baseball, there's certain injuries that happen, there's certain things that get derailed that don't make any sense. Um, but at the end of the season of the season of life, Jesus has won the victory and he's saying, Keep your eyes on glory. I'm with you. I'll give you what you need in those most difficult times, the loss of a loved one, whatever those most difficult times are. You can, you can trust in me that I'm walking this journey with you. Do not lose faith and do not lose hope. So Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your son Jesus. We thank you for the transfiguration. We thank you for those transfiguration moments, those encounters with you that we've had as well. Help us to keep our eyes on you, to not lose hope that you love us to the end, to the ultimate sacrifice of your son on the cross and his resurrection, opening the doors to new life for us. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please continue to like, subscribe, and share these videos with at least one person today. Tune into your families. Buen Camino, and God bless you.